everyone, it's Dr. Rick. I'm gonna do an unboxing on Iberogast. So those of you who have messaged me about how to get your guts moving, or at least how to prevent SIBO from getting worse, that's what I was talking about. Iberogast is a homeopathic solution or drops. It's liquid. And homeopathy, I think I've done a video before about this dilutional concept of taking nothing but water. And I'll probably have to do that in another video because it's not the time and place for it here. But if you are sensitive, if you have leaky gut, if you have that weird reaction that a lot of fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and Lyme people get when you take a over-the-counter medicine and it has a list of side effects and you have every side effect, this is for you, especially if you have bowel issues. So I'm gonna be talking about the Migrating Motor Complex, MMC. And this schematic is a mouth, I didn't have time to draw a face. This is a mouth, this is an esophagus, this is a stomach, this is a small intestine, and this is your colon. So the big question mark is, what happens in your colon? And regardless of whether you have regular bowel movements every day, or you're more diarrhea, or you have less than three bowel movements a week, which is not good. I know there are some people who have one bowel movement a week and they say, I've been doing that for life. That's not normal. Honestly, I would say there's probably something that can be improved because what happens here is this is the reservoir for all the digested products. In, the, in other words, if you take your food that you have from the environment, you break it down, you absorb everything and you have residual that you can't use, it goes in here right before you go poop. And that includes roughage that you can't digest, metals that you don't want, toxins that you don't want, hormones that you don't want, cholesterol that you don't want. You don't want that sitting in there too long because it'll absorb back into the bloodstream and then you get overloaded toxins. So that in a nutshell is why it has to always move in from one direction to the next. And I always tell my patients when you have the digestive tube, 26 to 27 feet long, say it's from here to here, your migrating motor complex is peristalsis. So you'll have contraction here, then you'll have contraction here, you'll have contraction here, and it'll go down the line until you actually push the poop out, or it starts as food, but it ends as poop. And that's a proper moving digestive tract. Now, some of us with irritability from anxiety, where the migrating motor complex or the myenteric plexus isn't working properly, or autonomic dysfunction, where you've been hammered by COVID and everything from the vagus nerve downward doesn't work right anymore, fast heart rate, uh, can't sleep, digestion's off, uh, irritability, hormones are off, or those of you with diabetes. Sometimes diabetes will make the nerves or the myenteric plexus not work properly. And when that happens, you don't move. It's not coordinated. It's like walking when you're a post-stroke victim and you can't walk it. You know, your brain knows what to do, but your muscles don't respond because the nerves don't work. Same thing with the digestive tract. And that part of the colon that holds all the bacteria this part is really good to help you with uh, that three pounds, check out my other video, but that three pounds of living material that's called a microbiome, well, it's supposed to stay here, but if the peristalsis isn't moving this way, it's gonna go backwards every once in a while, and you don't want excessive bacteria here because that microbiome is also connected with viruses, protozoa, and a bit of fungi. You know, now that, those three groups are a little bit on the low side, whereas the bacteria, the good bacteria, hopefully are really blooming and a huge population. This huge population, if it's fed right, if it's nurtured, if there are not too many antibiotics given throughout your life, will keep the other guys in check. It's when you destroy this population that the other guys blossom, and then you wind up having not only problems here, candida, uh, protozoal infection like amoeba, uh, bad bacteria, but you'll also have bad or good bacteria head this way. You cannot have that many bacteria here. You can have a few, but when the bacteria start to head this way, the wrong way, that is a problem because it turns on the little immune complex here. And it's, well, it's not really immune, a little. I'd say 70% it's thought of. 70% of your immune system is located here. I used to think it was in the lymph nodes, in the liver, in the bone, but it's actually in the small intestines in what's called Peyer's patches. And that's supposed to be a line of defense that circles the entire tube, the small intestine, that if the lining or the bacteria or the slime lets bad stuff through, 
the defensive system sits there like block linebackers and it keeps it from going in. But the problem is when you have leaky gut and you don't have any slime, you don't have any good bacteria and you have uh, uh, irritated lining, that one cell layer thick, of the small intestine, then the linebackers have to do all the work and they don't like doing all the work. So what happens is they'll do it, but then they'll also be really irritated and they'll start attacking not only the bad stuff in the small intestine that you are trying to poop out, they'll also start attacking your thyroid, your joints, your brain, your skin. So that's called autoimmune disease. So we want to stop that. And one of the easiest ways, if you have S-I-B-O, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, is to get movement or peristalsis going. This is a prokinetic. So sorry, it's kind of old. I've had this for a while. I don't use it because I do well with the ginger, but Iberogast is homeopathic. That means it's essentially uh, a few compounds that in the world of homeopathy have been diluted down to infinitesimal small amounts. In fact, almost smaller than microscopic amounts. And then they're put into, well, I guess I'll just open this now. They're put into this liquid and that's it. So, oops, sorry. Well, I guess I'll just show you if you can read it. These are the homeopathy, homeopathic, that's probably upside down. No, it's not. These are the homeopathic contents. There's a lot, but it's ingenious as far as the combination of the contents of homeopathy here. Here is the title. So I think it works very well. You're supposed to put drops in. Now, I'm not sure if there is a dropper with this. Let's open it up. Yeah, it, it comes like this, almost like an essential oil. So I guess I'll do it. You have to drop a couple drops, that's one. So you put about 20 to 30 drops in your drink and dilute it and then you drink that. And then that gets into your system and it works its magic. I, I really have to do a homeopathic, um, homeopathy video, but I know a little bit enough to be dangerous, no. I know enough to initiate treatment. I love homeopathy because those of you who do have leaky gut, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, mast cell activation syndrome, or just plain old, you, you uh, respond weirdly to a whole bunch of things. That again, because of its dilutional uh, content should not cause any side effects. So it should also move and it does very well. It moves. If you take this at night when you're fasting and I'll explain another thing. If you take it at night when you're fasting, and when you are fasting at night, the motor complex moves. The migrating motor complex is very active. When you eat something and the stomach has to digest it, the migrating motor complex is turned off because you have to keep the food, the solid, here until acid liquefies everything. And once it liquefies, usually the stomach senses that. It turns on the, the migrating motor complex, and then things start to move forward. So... The longest amount of fasting for most Americans is overnight, six to eight hours. So for those of you who practice intermittent fasting, like me, you'll usually eat your first meal at like 10 or 11 or 12 noon. That means if you have your last meal at eight and you don't eat until noon time, that's at least 17 hours of fasting. I get that right, 12, 13, 14, 15, well, that's close. But that's a significant amount of fasting. When you fast, things move. Uh, now, if you don't have that MMC, or the stimulation is there, is there is not there, or you're diabetic, or you have autonomic dysfunction, then sometimes by using this at night, you'll get the MMC moving, even if you are fasting. So there's uh, definitely a pathology of sorts when people have backwards movement, uh, which is one of the hallmarks of SIBO. In fact, usually what I feel the typical thing that you would probably feel is reflux. Once you swallow food, it's supposed to go into the stomach and then once it's digested and liquefied, it goes into the small intestine. Those of you who have reflux, when you eat too much or you eat the wrong thing, it goes backwards. That's the wrong way and that's called reflux. You have food comes back up or you have acid that kicks back up or you vomit when you tie your shoes. So we want it always to go that way. Now in a, an extended sense, that also happens down here. The division between the small intestine and the large intestine is, is called the ileocecal valve. It's called a valve because you're supposed to let stuff through, 
once it's all digested and not let it back in. But unfortunately, sometimes if the movement isn't always present, the pressure builds up here and it goes backwards. And that's the introduction that you don't want. So doing the Iberogast is innocent. Even kids can do this. Again, you have to, don't do it on your own. Take this information and bring it to your doctor and see if it pertains to you. I don't know that my colleagues in gastroenterology like it. They probably like metoclopramide, which is fair, or some of the H2 blockers will strengthen the lower esophageal sphincter and allow movement down. There's other prokinetics that are out there, but I think it's so natural that, that it probably has less side effects than everything out there prescription-wise. Now, if you don't want to try that because you don't believe in homeopathy, hey, ginger does it too. And as I suggested, ginger is positive, but it also can be negative in the fact that it is drying. As an herb in Ayurveda or Indian healing, it's drying. So it might give you a little problem. So start with one every night and just progress forward. Do that for a couple of nights. If you do well, then go to two, go to three. The serving size is three. Oh, no, nope, two capsules. Two capsules of serving size, and that's the ginger. So it does smell like ginger but it's concentrated. So if you try to do ginger on your own, it's a little bit different. You'll have to take a bushel of ginger. That I wouldn't do. So this is just convenient. So I would say, if you do have problems with IBS, bloating, uh, SIBO, MCAS, this is something you might wanna try. If you're constipated, please get it checked out by your doctor first, but if everything's a thumbs up and you've been scoped this way and then that way, and everything's normal, I think it's worth it to consider a prokinetic. In addition to all the other herbs I suggested on my other videos, check them out, there's like six of them, and I'll put a link down below. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of my prokinetic and what I suggest to keep things moving along the line. If you have any nice prokinetics or brands that you like, please put them in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching up to this point. If this helps you, then don't forget to consider subscribing because I do videos all the time. I'll be finishing up my gut series with one more video on how to change the bacteria to lose weight. That's coming up next week. Those of you who follow me, thank you. I appreciate it. If you can share this with other people who have those belly issues, please do. And I'll see you at the next video.